Hey guys, Nightwriter7602 here. Finally getting back to doing the Kids Next Door review. Yeah, it's been a while. So, where were we last time? Right, we had to discuss Father and the rest of the series. So, Father, what do I think of him? Uh, it's, I think it's more like the symbiote from Spider-Man latching on to Johnny Storm, the, aka the Human Torch, and like, what would that create? And I feel like that would be like, that's Father right there. So Father is pretty much, as the name suggests, the father of the delightful children from down the lane. And you know, I enjoy Father as a villain. I really do. I mean, he comes up with really complicated plans. He... Well, he has a short fuse. <laughs> Get it? Short fuse since he's on fire. Ah, whatever. No, we're not making. We're not gonna make stupid fire puns. We're not gonna stoop that low. Anyways, father rather decides to sit and observe from the sidelines sometimes than rather, you know, literally go out there and fight. But what he does, it's kind of more or less like he's there. The kids next door think he's just some adult, and then he just somehow magically catches on fire it's, it's weird yeah and also the flames don't really hurt the kids too much i mean there's like one scene where the kids next door literally dogpile the dude and then he winds up just going super saiyan like proportions of exploding and sending the all sending the characters like flying yeah and they're all not dead they're alive so it makes me think father's powers can they be tamed or not Father is also the main reason why the delightful children from down the lane are the way they are. Basically, in a short review and coming up in a few in a few minutes, we will, I shall explain that. And in other whom, Father, uh, I like him as a villain. It's he's kind of weird to me at first because I'm like, oh really? So he's like the Human Torch. So I'm kind of I was kind of turned off for a bit, and then I realized. Oh, you know, he has a pipe. Does he smoke out of that thing? I mean, come on. If you're a human torch type character, I mean, you would, like, just light your own thing and, like, sit there and chill. Not unless it's, like, one of those things that blows bubbles, then, in other words, you shouldn't be doing that. Anyways, I like Father in the season finale of the first few seasons. It's because, well, Father's plans tend to work sometimes. Yes, like, all villains his plan... His plans don't normally fail right when the hero comes in. The, he will, he actually manages to defeat the kids next door like a few times. He turns number one into an adult. He somehow becomes supreme overlord leader of the kids next door by winning a game of tag. Just, just roll with it. Just roll with it. Anyways, but to discover more about Father's backstory... We gotta go back, way back into the time period. You know, you know there's more multiple sectors of kids next door, but who was the first? The first question, the question you've been running from all your life. Who was the first member? Anyways, this is where the movie takes place. Operation Zero. The movie pick pits our heroes against an older version of father known as, get this, grandfather. Okay, but grandfather's powers aren't to like, oh, I can become the human torch. No, he has rogue's powers in the sense that whoever he touches can be turned into an old person. But it gets worse. They can be zombies too. Anyways, the movie is about really finding this book that has the entire secrets of the kids next door and revealing who was number zero and who was the original kids next door and how it came to be well spoiler alert number zero is nigel's father so i'm guessing like father like son the book manages to give give his father at least all his memories back in order to do one final battle with grandfather and defeat him permanently this movie also started the whole thing with number three and four's relationship. 
kind of the fact that they make out in their zombified form. That's an image that still burns my retinas to this day. That's an image burning at every kid's retinas to this day. You can't never take your eyes off it. Oh well, what can you do? Anyways, we also learn about Father's backstory. We actually learned that Father is kind of cowardly. He wasn't really the evil villain we thought he was. He, really, he inherited his grandfather's powers. But instead of making people old, he just turns into the Human Torch. Also, in a nice, cool fashion, we actually find out what happened to the delightful children. It turns out that Father or Grandfather made this machine known as like the delightful chamber or whatever and stuck sector z inside sector z is actually the delightful children from down the lane and it's pretty cool because they managed to split them up in order to have the final fight as well but towards the end of the movie they start kind of getting back into their formation which is kind of sad because it would been cool seeing the all like seeing Sector Z probably in action and then having to deal with a lot of shit. Anyways, I love this movie. This movie was awesome. I wish they made more movies, kind of, because, you know, it'd be kind of cool. But I think the next one will kind of count as its own movie if you were. But it's a one hour special, and you know it as the last episode of Kids Next Door Operation Interviews. What can I say about this episode? This episode actually ends with the cake with a cake episode. This is literally what I thought. Kids Next Door first episode was about the pool. Not many people know about it. And later episode is the cake episode. So it's a throwback to episode two of the original se series or season. And I really enjoy it. So what's the main focus of the episode? The episode's about the kids next door a few years later getting an interview. Now, wait, this isn't in a cartoon format. It's live action. I'm not sure if this was supposed to be part of that seeing real shit that was going on, but I, I didn't like it too much. It was too weird. Anyways, they both, all the members except for number one, tells kind of like their own story, tell the story of what happened in that final, that final mission. What happened is the delightful children decide to have another birthday party. Okay. Well, they decide to open the cake to everybody who wants a piece. So they decide to have a water rafting race. This is like the equivalency of your good man Charlie Brown, except it's no canoeing. And, you know, it's not, it's not Charlie Brown, and Charlie Brown got a new voice actor, and, and you know, everything just goes downhill from... Okay, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyways, basically, this is like the whole, the final battle thing. Every hero, every villain, every anti-hero comes out of the woodwork in order to get that piece of cake. And it just makes me wonder, cake, why is it that's so alluring? It's like, uh, it's cake, it's sweet, it's soft, it's delicious, and there's all that frosting on it. Cake's really alluring. Well, the race is going on, and we find out that the water rafting race was also a big scheme to make a giant cake that has something to do with the children. It's kind of weird, too. But each time, they keep cutting back to the live-action portion or the cartoon portion, and the ending is pretty much the number five, four, three, and two are fighting off father while number one gets on our spaceship pretty much saying that he is going to go away and fight for children throughout the entire universe uh, okay dude you, you go do that and pretty much number one just flies off into space and the episode kind of ends with father saying ah now I know where he is and he disappears number five says Yep, he took the plan, he took the bait, and the episode just ends. Uh, not much of a letdown, but more or less like, what? So what's going to happen? We don't see a final fight with Father? What? Oh well. You know, while I'm on it, let's talk about some of my favorite episodes of the series. 
And first of all, I love this uh, this picture right here. I don't remember the name of the episode, but this was pretty famous for having a lot of like references to comic books and stuff. The only one I seem to remember correctly is number four. Being that I was a huge DBZ fan when I was a kid, I instantly pointed out, hey, they're parodying Dragon Ball Z. And hey, number four is supposed to be Goku. And delightful children from down the lane is supposed to be Frieza. The entire episode's about a box of pizza that they couldn't seem to get just because they were having their own delusional fantasies. Take a page out of a Kiba Ranger book. But more on them later. Anyways, that's one of my personal favorite episodes. Another one in which I never I never mentioned this too, but apparently there is a rule in the kids next door where a certain member can't be decommissioned and can still continue their mission as a teenager. That's like one episode about the chicken pox. I kind of liked it, but it was kind of weird. Because I'm thinking that number five kind of had some kind of romantic interest within that guy, Ma Maureen. One of my favorite episodes is number 19th century. It's another cake episode. And um, it's kind of an obvious reference to Captain America. Come, can anybody just tell me? Just tell me, you got a guy from the 19th century. You got a guy who was frozen for years, unfrozen, having to cope with society afterwards, and then having to go on a mission to save the Earth. That's tough, man. He had no Avengers. He had no Hulk. However, he did have a sweet makeout moment with number 86. It was pretty hilarious. But, however, I don't know, last, number 19th century was decommissioned. I, I mean, there were some pretty good plot points we could have had with him. Like, maybe he knew something in the past that could probably help beat the villains, whatever. Well, nope. Decommissioned, get a plunger to his face, suck it all out. Damn. Well, I should mention this before I go, but I really don't want to, I never liked the episode anyways. It was too weird. It felt like two things contrasting. Kids Next Door meets Billy and Mandy. This was a this team up shouldn't have happened. I didn't like it. It was too dumb. And that's all I really got to say about it. So, there you go. Kids Next Door. Do I like it? Does the series still hold up to this day? Yes. Watch the series again. Hey, I think it's on Netflix now, so you can probably watch every cartoon series that you love. So, being cool, awesome, and also I'm a Google partner. <laughs> yeah, didn't mention that in the beginning. So, Knight Rider 7602, signing out. Hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you, and good night.